So as I said, we're going to give a recap of some of the problems we were talking about last week, but we're going to try to take a bigger picture look at them. So rather than getting really invested in the details of what Hawthorne was saying in his discussion last time, I'm going to try to bring more to the surface why these issues are important. So we've been talking about knowledge from the very beginning, how we might think about knowledge, what kind of theory of knowledge we might give. But we've said actually not a lot about why you might think knowledge is so interesting in the first place. It's a big question, why have philosophers spent so much time thinking about knowledge and trying to give a definition of it and things like that. People have various different opinions about what the answer to that question is. But one reason you might think that knowledge is interesting is because of the kind of theoretical role it plays in our lives. One big idea you might have about knowledge is that knowledge is really central to how we evaluate people when we're just trying to decide whether they're acting rationally or not. Knowledge is the kind of thing we look to when we try to explain people's actions and ask whether those actions are rational. And in fact, we've already seen this idea because we talked about the idea that knowledge regulates assertion, that is, that you should only assert things if you know them. We've seen the idea that maybe knowledge regulates practical reasoning, that you, don't, you should only take things for granted when you know them. Both of these ideas are an instance of this bigger idea that knowledge is the kind of thing that we should be interested in when we're trying to figure out whether people are acting rationally or not. If you have that view of knowledge, I think it's much more obvious why questions about knowledge are so interesting. It's a fundamental tool that we need to use whenever we're explaining how people are acting. So when you put all this together, you can see that one way to proceed when we're trying to give a theory of knowledge is to look at the things that knowledge is supposed to do and frame our theory around that. Construct a theory which has the properties that knowledge would have if it does all the things that we think it does. And when you zoom out, actually this is the way that Hawthorne's argument against contextualism goes, or at least that's one way of putting it. Because as we saw, one general property he thinks knowledge has is that it's tied to these evaluations. People act well in how they assert and how they reason only if they know these things. His next observation then is that these evaluations, these evaluations of how people are asserting or how well they're reasoning, are not, do not themselves seem to be context-sensitive notions. He thinks it's not a context-sensitive matter how well somebody is asserting or how well somebody is reasoning. If they're doing these things correctly in their own context, it should seem that way from the point of view of every other context as well. And one way to think why, about why this might be true is just that when evaluating how somebody is doing, it maybe makes sense to sort of use the standards that they're operating with. You might ask yourselves, well, does it make sense to evaluate how well somebody is asserting things and how well they're reasoning using standards that are different from the ones that they take to be governing what they're doing? Putting it this way, it looks like the natural answer is maybe no. Whenever we're evaluating people, we should be using the standards that they themselves take themselves to be living up to and not evaluate them by standards that are higher than those that they're trying to live up to. So that's a quick argument for the thought that these evaluations of how, pe how well people are asserting or reasoning are not context-sensitive judgments. But now you might just turn this into an argument against contextualism. Because if contextualism is true, then whether you can be truly said to know something is a context-sensitive matter. In some contexts it will be true to say you know something, in other contexts it would be false to say that you know that thing. But if there is supposed to be this connection between what you can be truly said to know and what you can be truly said to be taking for granted properly or asserting properly, then it would look like that the latter notion of how well you're doing is also going to be context sensitive. Because if knowledge is what governs it and knowledge is context sensitive, then you might think, well, that it, isn't it just going to follow that how well you can be said to be doing is also going to be context sensitive. And then the problem for contextualism is that, as we just saw a moment ago, the latter notion of how well you're doing, how well you're asserting, or how well you're reasoning, doesn't seem to be context-sensitive. So this kind of argument looks at a property that we think that knowledge should have, namely that it should be connected in important ways, it should regulate our behaviour in, in certain ways, or put differently, it should be something we use to explain whether or not people are acting rationally, and then the argument says, well, if that were the case, if knowledge really were like this, it would have 
very different properties from the ones that contextualist actually says it does have. It wouldn't be context sensitive because if it were, it would make those other notions context sensitive. And we've argued that they aren't. It's not a context sensitive matter whether you can be truly said to be doing well or not. So this kind of argument proceeds by trying to isolate what's really important to knowledge, trying to focus on why do we care about the concept of knowledge, and seeing that, well, if that were the case, if knowledge really were important to us because of how we use it to explain people's behavior, it would have very different properties from the ones the contextualist says it does. And obviously if that's right, if we think that knowledge does have these properties, um, and that they are very different from what the contextualist would predict, you might think that is a strong argument against contextualism.